ultimately, like we, you know, we currently operate on two layers. We have sort of a limbic, like prime primitive brain layer, which is where all of our kind of impulses are, are coming from. It's sort of like we've got we've got like a monkey brain with a computer stuck on it. That's that's the human brain, <laughs> and a lot of our impulses and everything are driven by the monkey brain, and the the computer, the cortex. Uh, is constantly trying to make the mon- monkey brain happy. It's not the cortex that's steering the monkey brain. It's the monkey brain steering the cortex. You know, so. but the cortex is the part that tells the story of the whole thing. So we convince ourselves it's it's uh, more interesting than just the monkey brain. The cortex is like what we call like human intelligence. You know, so it's like the, that's like the advanced computer relative to other creatures. Uh, other other creatures do not have either. Really, they, they don't. They don't have the computer, or they have a very weak computer relative to humans. But but it's this, it's like it, it sort of seems like sh- surely the really smart thing should control the dumb thing, but actually the dumb thing controls the smart thing. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think some of the same kind of machine learning methods, or whether that's natural language processing applications, are going to be applied for the communication between the machine and the brain? To, to learn how to do certain things like movement of the body, how to process visual stimuli and so on. Do you see the value of using machine learning to understand the language of the two-way communication with the brain? Sure, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're a neural net and, and that, you know, AI is basically a neural net. So it's like digital neural net will interface with biological neural net and hopefully bring us along for the ride, you know. But the vast majority of our, of, of our of our intelligence will be digital. This is like like so like think of like the the difference in intelligence between your the cortex and your limbic system is gigantic. Your, your your limbic system really has no comprehension of what the hell the cortex is doing. Um, you know, it's just literally hungry, you know, or tired or angry or sexy or something you know it's, and, and just and, and then it, that communicates that that impulse to the cortex and tells the cortex to go satisfy that <laughs> so then a lot of a great deal of like a, a massive amount of thinking like truly stupendous amount of thinking has gone into sex yeah. without purpose without procreation without procreation which, yeah. which which is actually quite a silly action in the absence of procreation, it's it's a bit silly. Well, so why are you doing it? Because it makes the limbic system happy. That's why. That's why. But it's pretty absurd, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, the whole of existence is pretty absurd in some kind of sense. Yeah, but that, but I mean, this is a lot of computation has gone into how can I do more of that with <laughs> procreation not even being a factor. This is, I think, a very important area of research by NSFW. <laughs> Uh, an agency that should receive a lot of funding, especially after this conversation. <laughs> I propose the formation of a new agency. Oh boy! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but people generally like the fact that they have a limbic system and a cortex. I haven't met anyone who wants to delete either one of them. So they're like, okay, I'll keep them both. That's cool. The limbic system's kind of fun. Yeah, that's where the fun is. Yep, absolutely. Um, and then you, you, people generally don't want to uh, lose the cortex either. Right, so they like having the cortex and the limbic system. Yeah, uh, and and then there's a tertiary layer which will be digital superintelligence, and I, I think there's room for optimism given that the cortex, the the, the, the the cortex is very intelligent and the limbic system is not, and yet they work together well. Perhaps there can be a tertiary layer uh, where where digital superintelligence lies, and that that will be vastly more intelligent than the cortex, but still coexist peacefully and in a benign manner with the cortex and limbic system.